And you're with uh, Jacob and Tommy as well, Tim. So what are we looking at today? Welcome, Tim. Good to talk to you, man. Yeah, good to talk to you. We got all three of us on, huh? That's right. (laughs) That's right. So, um, all right. um, Actually, we can start on chart one if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get over to that right now. Or, um, All right, so we're looking at the SPX on chart one. Yeah, chart one. Um, actually, the first thing I want to discuss, um, we were up five months in a row going into July, which is a second window up from the bottom. And uh, this is kind of a momentum study. It's uh, Go back and do this in a nutshell. When you're up five minutes a row in a row, that's never the final high. There's at least, at a minimum, one more new high, if not multiple new highs. So it's, it's a momentum uh, type, um, I forget what you call it. Uh, uh, but anyhow, it's, it's a momentum study. The last time we did this was back in 2020. You're up uh, five months in a row. I got it circled in blue on the volume chart. Went down two months, then you started making higher highs. We got a kind of a similar thing here uh, going. So ultimately, we're going to hit a new high. If we're going to just hit one month new high or multiple new highs, it's unknown. But I think the the pattern that is forming here uh, is the head and shoulders bottom. We're currently um, messing around on the right shoulder right now. And we have support on the SPX around uh, 4,200, uh, which is basically the previous highs of that consolidation that started in April of 2022 and went on to, um, you know, April, May of 2023. So we're sitting on top of that support zone right now and a lot of times on head and shoulders uh patterns there's a lot of um, um similarities or rhymes in other words if the left shoulder should rhyme with the right shoulder in other words the price highs and price lows should be about the same and the number of of the time sequence of the left shoulder should approximate to, uh, to the time sequence of the right sh- uh, shoulder and we're probably about done with this. So on a bigger time frame, I think we're setting that support and the right shoulder is forming here. And so uh, ultimately we're going to hit a new high uh, at some point in the next, I think probably this month, but we'll wait and see. But uh, flip to uh, chart two. All right, we got it up, the VIX. Yeah, it's a VIX. And uh, I showed this chart uh, last week uh, with with Tom. I talked about a little bit about it, and uh, it's, it's actually uh, it measures the momentum of the VIX. Uh, so the faster the VIX goes up, the more in panic is because you know VIX is called uh, a fear gauge, and so when fear is is around, VIX rises. And so I I looked at it a different way. I, I look at the acceleration of the VIX, how fast fear rises. And the faster fear rises, it's kind of like the exit door. The faster it goes uh, to people trying to get out of the exit, uh, the more uh, closer to, I, I guess, a bottom you might see. So anyhow, I got uh, kind of a momentum indicators on the VIX. The bottom window is the RSI. Next one up uh, from the bottom is the... Uh, uh, two period rate of change, that's the ROC, and the next one up is a percent uh, B, which is basically when you're at one, you're hitting the upper Bollinger Band. When you're at zero, you're hitting the lower Bollinger Band. When it's at 50, you're at the mid Bollinger Band. And to really uh, uh, find out how this indicator works, you need two of the three, or preferably all three of them, to hit in bullish uh, regions. Well, last week we hit in two of the regions. Now, the market's gone a little bit lower, but it did pick up that low last week. Now we're doing back down to a retest. But I still think we're probably at some sore important low here because red support, which is previous highs around that, on the SPYs around the 4,200. Uh, and we had a, a decent, um, 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 uh, you know, a kind of a acceleration in the VIX. So I think some sort of a low is being formed here. Um, I'm probably going pretty fast here, but we can uh, no, go to chart great, three. Go and you can kind of see where that support lies. And the the, uh, the second window up from the bottom 
is a 10-day average of the trend. Now he said uh, readings around 1.2 are usually where that's where panic forms uh, on a trend, anything uh, at 1.2 or higher. Uh, but if you get a 10-day, you basically got two weeks of panic, and that's usually uh, good enough uh, to form a worthwhile low. Uh, the previous times I marked it with uh, pink areas every time the 10-day trend got to 1.2 or higher. And the the album came at near lows here. So we got the makings of a bottom in this vicinity. And I said once before, I thought we may not reach 120 or or 20 or 40 or 420 or 4200 on the SBX, 420 on the SBYs. And I didn't, because we had quite a bit of panic at a little bit higher level, but we did get down to 420. We're sitting in that region right now. And, um, um, so we did get to uh, 1.2 on the 10-day trend, or actually 1.19. I think that's close enough. The blue lines going across the chart are showing times when the RSI of the SPX have reached below 30 as of today. And you know, we're at 29.21. So we got an RSI uh, on the uh, SPYs along with the 10-day trend around 1.2. So we're in an important area, red support. Um, actually, a little bit surprised today was a down day, but a lot of times the market will do just something one more day down to kind of knock you out. But in my opinion, uh, we're making a low in this vicinity. Um, I thought September could be an up month. I, I think this is just an ABC down. If you look at the high of, of August down to the current low, in my opinion, we're probably just doing an ABC down. And uh, we got panic uh, in the VIX, and we got a little panic in the trends, and we're near support. Could it go a little bit below support? Usually it, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But um, we got quite a few things popping up here. I think uh, ultimately we're going to hit a new high because of uh, the momentum indicator on, on uh, chart one, five months up in a row, predict the market will be at least one more new high. So. I'm not really afraid of the downtrend here starting. I'm trying to figure out exactly what day is the low. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. Do you have some questions or anything? Tim, I tell you, can I jump in, Jay? I was just, yep. just, just thinking about it as you're talking about it, Tim. We've been talking about yields a, a lot. Do you, do you look at yields? Do you have an expectation? Are we going to see a, a little bit of a re- reversal um, on those yields potentially, if that's the market action, or is that just a separate issue? Or how do you do? You, do you look at those numbers? Maybe we can uh, hang actually, during the break. I do have an indicator talk. on that, and I, I, I see yields been going up. Um, I, I see. I hear your phone, or I, I hear your music, so we can. Yeah, we can wait next, until we get back from the break. That'd be great. Wonderful. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tommy O'Brien and Tim Ord. Welcome back, folks. We are with Tim Ord. Tim, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. And Tommy, you had a question for Tim before we went to the break. So, Tim, you were just talking about yields. I'm just, you know, of course, like most people, I'm sure yields are are driving some of this action and and was wondering what you think about yields, if this might be a little bit of an area that we get the market to trade topside and, and what you're looking for, if anything, from yields. Yeah. Uh, actually, I just sent over a chart, uh, SPX tilt, T-I-L-T, or T-L-T. Um, uh, did you have a chance to, I just sent it over an email to, to Tommy, you, and um, Jacob. Taking a look right now. Okay, I'm taking a look at it. I don't have it yet, but I will take a look at it. Maybe you have it, Jacob, uh, or maybe it's coming. Yeah, I think yep, it I got it right here. Uh, give me a second. See if I can pull it up in here. Yep, and I I have it as well. Let's see. Well, here I can just blow it up within. I've got it up, Tim. Here, Go I for have, it. I can. Yeah, I have it as you well. You got it, Jacob? Yep. Okay, perfect. We got it up. Go for it, Tim. All right. Well, anyhow, it's uh, the bottom window is twenty-year Treasury, which is a TLT. Next uh, uh, next one up is just the daily SPX. Then, uh, then I did a S- SPX tilt ratio, uh, trying to figure out, you know, if, if it's 
you know, if, if, there, if there's any news there or any information that is worthwhile, what I found out was, in general, when the RSI, which is the top window of that ratio, SPX-TLT ratio, it gets up around 70 or higher, usually you got a little short-term high. And currently, uh, I just sent this over at, uh, I can't quite, it looks like about 56, 57, so... It's not really saying a whole lot as far as this ratio goes, but when it gets down, RSI gets down below 30, a lot of times you're setting at a low, which are the um, uh, red times, and uh, the blue arrows are when the RSI is up around 70, that's usually a high. So it kind of picked out the high in August there, and and actually had a little high in June, nothing real significant, and you had some highs back in February and stuff, but right now it's kind of in limbo. It's not saying a whole lot, uh, even though the tilt's been going down here. Um, it's not, it's, it hasn't reached any extremes that suggest it's going to p- produce anything in the market as far as a reversal, either up or down. That's how I'm kind of reading it. So we need to really get above 70 plus to really suggest that market high may occur. But, um, not a lot of information, you know. If you, if you look at it in general, you know the the this ratio SPX tilt ratio kind of trends with the market. I mean, even though uh, you know it, it get a uh, it started a rally in basically March, and uh, now the S and P's been correcting uh, since August, and this ratio has kind of still been going higher. I don't know if that could mean an intermediate term bullish sign, but in general, you know, I really doesn't really say a whole lot. So I'll put it that way. Not enough information for me to make a judgment on it. So, but um, we, we I can appreciate put it. You, uh, number, I was just going to uh, say yields are a tough forward. one. I appreciate it. It's a, everyone's interested where they're going, um, and and maybe the market just marches higher without a huge adjustment on yields. We'll see. Yeah, that's, um, I, I don't know yet. You know, it hasn't seems like this this ratio SPX when it reaches extremes, either up or down, goes up down too fast. Or, or, or goes up too fast or down too fast, that's when usually reversals of some sort happen in the SPX. And so far, um, it hasn't really said anything. So maybe it'll say something here in the next couple of days, don't know. But as of today, it's not saying much. So um, let's flip to chart four. I have it right here. All right, uh, chart four, I've been showing this thing for the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is a long-term chart of the, it's a weekly bullish percent index slash GDX ratio. And every time this ratio got below, um, um, uh, uh, minus or 20, less than 25, you're setting that intermittent term low. And I circled the times when the market actually, it was setting at a low, but it more or less flipped sideways. And if you look on the GD, uh, GDX chart, which is basically the middle chart. It's the weekly GDX chart. Uh, we flipped, uh, this ratio uh, gave a bullish signal back in uh, mid-2015, and it flipped sideways for several months before the rally began. We had another signal in late 2021, circled in red, and it flipped sideways for several months before the rally began. The last signal, uh, or we had another signal in mid-2022, it went down a little bit over the next few months or the next few weeks before the rally began. And this signal was generated on August 28th of 2000, or September 1st, so about a month, month and a half ago. And it's still gone down some. So uh, is this signal failing or is this kind of a normal procedure? Sometimes it reverses right on the money. Sometimes it flips sideways to down a little bit before the rally begins. Well, let's flip to chart number five to see actually where we are. So this this chart gave a uh, August, or actually September 1st, it gave a buy signal. Uh, this chart looks at the short-term picture of, of what GDX is doing. And on the bottom window is the up-down volume um, with an 18-day average, and it's up-down volume for GDX. Next window higher is advanced decline uh, for GDX with an 18-day average. And the blue areas are, are times when both those indicators are above minus 10. And the pink areas are times when both those indicators are below minus 10. And so we've kind of been flipping, you know, blue and pink over here, over, actually over the, since 
pretty much all year. Uh, it's gone up, it's gone down, it's gone up, it's gone down, and we're basically all the way back to May of uh, or March of this this year, and we're kind of testing that area. We're actually a little bit below it. And if you look uh, at where our when I did this chart earlier today, now the minus ten on both indicators is kind of the key area. If you're above minus ten, it means the the uptrend has started in GDX. When it's below minus ten, then a decline has started in GDX. And uh, as of the time I sent this chart over, the bottom window is uh, or the bottom indicator is a point or is minus eight. And the next indicator up is a minus nine and a half. So we're basically at minus 10 on both of them, just actually a hair above it. Uh, so if that holds that level and needs to hold that level and stay above minus 10 to say the rally is starting. So, well, you know, Tom and I have been talking about it. I'm thinking, you know, the rally is starting here in September. It well went up and went back down again. But ultimately, because of, of uh, chart four, if you go back to chart four, at some point, we're going to start a rally. It's going to stick, according to that chart four rally, or uh, to chart four, which is that uh, weekly bullish percent index slash GDX ratio, because the RSI is below minus twenty five. So, is this the one that starts and keeps going, or will it turn blue for a little short while and turn back to uh, to pink again? I don't know. Um, it could, it couldn't, but if you notice, we're also making higher lows on both those indicators where GDX is making lower lows, and I pointed out those times in the past when that has happened. So we have a positive divergence here. So I hear your music. So Yeah, Tim, thank you so much. I mean, fascinating as always, and it's always great to have you on. Folks, if you want to get in contact with Tim or see what he's about, he's at the Ord hyphen oracle.com. That is Ord hyphen oracle.com. Tim, thank, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. me on. Absolutely. See you next yep. time, Tim. Folks, stay tuned. Right. We'll be right back.